Have you been shadow banned by the liberal media? Free market got you down? Do you get ratioed on every Twitter post because of your shit takes on literally everything? Then producer Dave and HK are probably watching your three-hour dissertation on how a tomato cannot possibly be a fruit because gender and critical race theory can be cured with ivermectin. The Intellectual Dollar Tree, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Please leave it a one-star review on iTunes. Check out the rest of our schedule at ecoplexmedia.com. So please excuse my sarcastic tone I'm a bit underwhelmed by the sample show Mr. Bistro Fraternity Guy You got my ass for bloodshot eyes Get drunk and fight every night Idolize Bradley, belittle women's rights Homophobic, racist, and don't give a fucking hey Do you think you can drive a bigger truck? So wear your baseball cap to the side to let everyone know that you're a nice guy I was so cool, I was so impressed Lots of chicks in a barrel chest Cause you're a real man, punch for punch Gonna piss in your face while you're passed out drunk well, I'm a nice guy, you're a nice guy He's a nice guy, but all of you are a Welcome to the Plex. We do the show live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific right here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. If you're listening to this on the podcast, head on over to Twitch and follow us because we're live Wednesday through Sunday night every week. Schedule may change. You can check out the schedule at echoplexmedia.com. And if you want to support this project, there's a cool new way to do it. You can go to eplex.store and you can subscribe there just like you would on Patreon and you'll get the same perks that you would get on Patreon. But if you subscribe through our, uh, through a swag shop, you actually get a discount on items in the swag shop. So that's 
probably better than Patreon. Um, plus, it's from Fourth Wall. Fourth Wall's been great. Anyway, uh, I'm Producer Dave, and uh, this is, in fact, what the people want. I don't hate the cops. And there's a person inside when the truncheon stops. I don't hate the cops. Oh, when the raiders come, who will protect the shops? Don't hate the cops. They're a sensitive bunch if you don't stop throwing your rocks. Snap, crack, or pop is the sound of a taser. Your body drops. Don't hate the cops. But don't hate the cops. Don't hate the cops. But don't hate the cops. Like your local police. Cause they don't do nothing wrong like your local police. Got rid of the corruption and the racism is gone. They've been keeping the peace. Keeping homeless folks out of the parks and malls. Got a cure for your social disease. Follow the law, don't hate the cops. Follow the law, don't hate the cops. Follow the law, don't hate the cops. students. He was there day in and day out. They're, they're somebody's babies, too. <laughs> what do you think about There's just this? so much heartbreak and so much brokenness and evil in this world. We can't pretend that it doesn't exist. And to think about what these precious families and children have gone through and will go through is just gut-wrenching. We've covered this time and time again. And I think about this woman, whatever turns out to be the story there, it does feel like from the many times we've covered these kinds of things that there's a personal connection. It would be so odd that she would go off the road to find this place and word that she was possibly a student there at one point. There's just so much more to this story. But what ends up at the end of the night is that we have broken families and people who will be devastated by the phone calls that they're going to get and the grief that they are going to suffer. You talked about how we have this new polling out showing that people are increasingly pulling away from faith and from caring about each other and from the things that are the fabric of our society so that people who are hurt and broken will find somewhere to find community or find relief or find help other than carrying it out on innocent people. So um, I know that the, you know, the one uh, local official there talked about prayer and hell. And you mentioned this. I mean, people mock it and say that it's not a good thing. But I think sometimes we have nothing left but to say, God, please help us to that. We can't make sense of this situation, but just meet us in the grief. And sometimes that's all we can ask for. So we did hear um, from the White House and a renewed effort to bring back the assault weapon. Yeah, just pray. Just pray. That's all you got to do. Just pray. Don't worry about it. Don't pressure anybody about policy. Don't <clears throat> don't try to don't try to do anything. Just pray because God will meet you there in your grief and situations you don't understand. Just pray. It's fine. Anyway, next clip is called Only in America. 
name is Ashby Beasley. I'm from Highland Park, Illinois. I was actually in town just on vacation, um, but I'm a mass shooting survivor. My son and I survived a mass shooting in Highland Park where there was a shooting at a parade that we were at. We ran for our lives. And this is just unacceptable. It's only in America can somebody survive a mass shooting and then go on vacation um, to visit another person that they have met through, you know, fighting for gun safety and find themselves at another, in a, involved, like near another mass shooting. Like only, you know what I mean? Like only in America does this happen where we keep seeing this again and again and again. You know, only in America does her son survive a mass shooting and then, you know, end up in a lockdown school because there is another mass shooting. Yeah. This is an epidemic. Gun violence is an epidemic and it needs, it needs to, it needs to be, to be resolved. It needs to be addressed. When you hear about it happening at a school again, what, what goes through your, your head? Um, I mean, for me, the statistics start running. It, uh, like It's likely this gun was purchased legally. It's likely it was not stored properly and a child took it. I, I heard that it might have been a child, a, a sixth grader. Um, I, I mean, just how preventable this is, how preventable these incidences are, how we should pass gun safety legislation and lock up weapons and, you know, um, put background checks, require background checks on every single um, gun purchase, ban assault weapons, and, and until we... None of that's ever going to happen. Um, ever, ever, ever. That's crazy, though, that she was, like, the victim of a mass shooting and then she was on vacation. And then the place she was on vacation just happened to be where the where there was a mass shooting crazy town that's really only in, only in america that she is right this is the only country where that's like a, a thing that is going to happen to you or that you're going to be involved in wild wild anyway up next we have waters waters is going to be like you should not politicize shootings but i jesse waters should politicize shootings Democrats in the media not waiting for any of these facts to come out. They moved immediately to politicize the attack. Let's I want to know if this woman trans man is 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 shooting up a Christian school that she knew was a Christian school. Is it a hate crime? Well, school shooter was identified as a 28 year old who is transgender. The suspect who identifies as a transgender was a former student. The shooter identified as a 28-year-old transgender former student. The surveillance video from inside the school shows the trans killer neutralizing the trans killer. The police chief says the trans shooter had a manifesto. The trans mass shooter messaged a friend saying this. So a mentally ill trans girl was stockpiling guns. What's going on in the trans community? Remember, there have been members of the trans community calling for a day of rage. And a radical trans group, the Trans Resistance Network, is already coming to the Nashville shooter's defense. So the trans community is sympathizing with the child killer. CNN is saying the trans situation had nothing to do with the hate crime. He wants to strip your rights away because of what a trans killer did. That It's too dicey to talk about parents and transgender, mental health, hardening soft targets. They don't want to go there. Surgeons are making an obscene amount of money off trans. How does the trans element factor into the violence here? It's very central to the violence. They didn't, quote unquote, accept the facts that she was transgender. It's a lie that parents have to choose between a live transgender child and a dead straight one. What Why the do fuck? Think the press doesn't want to focus on the parents' accountability, on the mental illness, on the trans factor. You mentioned the trans issue. Can we now finally talk about militant trans violence and what these activists what are the fuck? to? What the fuck? You saw the top of the show. We have this trans mass shooter the fact that it was a fact that the shooter was a trans individual and that the last four mass shootings have involved trans individuals the last four mass shooting uh, that i don't know where they're getting that information from i think the i remember the pulse shooter i believe uh was was a queer person and they had a uh, a beef a personal beef with uh, either security or the, the promoter of the club or whatever but the last four it's that's just untrue um, you know, like th any group of people is going to have a violent people in the group of people. And that's just the way it is. This person happened to be a trans man. That's just the way it is. It doesn't like, we don't, we, we don't ever focus on 
or at least Fox won't ever focus on like the identity of the shooter if it happens to be like a like a a, a gun nut essentially, like a crazy gun person. They never want to talk about that. But in this case, I guess they want they want to go all in on this person's identity and you know, I don't think I'm going to read the manifesto if it becomes public, but we're that manifesto has some shit in it. And I, I don't know what the fuck the manifesto says. The manifesto could say anything. And, uh, we're just kind of waiting on that. So, uh, here's uh Tulsi Gabbard on the Tucker Carlson show, uh, talking about mass, mass shootings, guns, and of course the woke. Yesterday's massacre did not happen because of lax gun laws. Yesterday's massacre happened because of a deranged and demonic ideology that is infecting this country with the encouragement of people like Joe Biden. Wait, what? Let's start by being honest about that. Tulsi Gabbard is in Nashville tonight, and she joins us. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it seems calculated that the authorities in Nashville and the national authorities are withholding from us and stopping any conversation among us about why this happened. Wouldn't that be the first question that any rational person would ask? So the manifesto that they found, the reason that we got access to other manifestos immediately after the shooting is because people put them on places like 4chan, 8kun, sometimes even Facebook. <laughs> and it seems like the, seems like law enforcement in this case found uh, a manifesto or what they're calling a manifesto uh, subsequent to the subsequent to this massacre. And they're kind of keeping it close to the vest because they're, they're still investigating. We, the, somebody's going to be able to FOIA this thing eventually, I'm sure. Yes, Tucker, it has to be. And I, I can only imagine that, you know, for the families and the, the students here, I'm standing here at the Covenant School entryway behind me, seeing them coming in and uh, paying their respects to the oh, fantastic just what they need Tulsi Gabbard there, showing up flowers there Questioning why why did this happen and, and as you mentioned it is so important for us as a society as a country to confront that question With the truth, you know, we see this uh, This so-called woke uh, trans ideology this uh, agenda of sexualizing our kids at very young ages being pushed across the country and this dangerous message to our kids saying that, hey, if you are being taught traditional values, whether it be by, you know, your teachers or your parents, you are a victim of child abuse. And that's what it looks like what happened here, that this shooter seems like they felt justified because they were a victim and therefore they right. felt they had. But no, we don't know any of this. Now you're just fucking making shit up. She's just straight up making this part up because we don't know. We just don't know. So right here, this is called making shit up. Tulsi's on the making shit up network on the biggest making shit up ass show on that making shit up network, making shit up. Go and and take this action based on retribution to go after, uh, you know, the so-called abusers. Uh, the real child abuse that's happening here is coming from those who are seeking to sexualize our kids again at younger and younger ages. and. And the message that, that this tragedy, unfortunately, sends to us all and the message that those you're talking about are trying to send is watch out, be careful. You will not only be canceled, but now you face the threat of violence or even worse, uh, death. We but wait a minute. These, the, 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 this, is, this doesn't even it doesn't even make sense on its own terms, because if this was like political retribution or something, right? I don't think it would be at the school unless me. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I don't want to be making shit up now. I'm fucking making shit up, too, because it's fucking contagious. Sorry about that. To confront this truth, we as a society have to have the courage to protect our kids, understanding that we can't allow them to intimidate us if we hope to to provide a future for our kids, to provide a future in this country. This doesn't sound like a liberation movement to me. I think most Americans, I'll speak for myself, are in instinctively sympathetic to anything that liberates us. Um, but this seems like a movement inspired by hate. And we know that by the reaction to the murder of the most innocent among But we don't know. We don't know any of that. We don't know. Uh, making shit up again. Making shit up. We don't know. We have no idea what the motivation for this was just making shit up on the making shit up network on the most making shit up fucking making shit up show 
on the Making Shit Up Network. We don't know. Yesterday, if it's impossible for certain groups to say unequivocally, this is evil, then I think that tells you something about their motive and where they're coming from. Uh, it, it really does. This comes to the core interest that we should all share, which is what is in the best interest of our kids. Uh, how can we as a society protect them and allow our kids to be kids and protect their innocence? We see those who are trying to uh, push this agenda on that, the most innocent, the most impressionable uh, among us for, for their own nefarious purposes. They are the ones who are enacting this abuse. They are the ones what? No. who are motivated not by good, not by love, uh, but instead by darkness and hate. I think darkness is the word. I think it's exactly right. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard joining us tonight from Nashville. Thank you so much. My God, she just made, they just made the whole thing up. They're like, oh, this was, uh, they were, <clears throat> they just made it up. They made up the motivations. We don't know. We don't have shit as far as information on the motivations or what this person believed their motivations were or like, how in their mind they justified the massacre they were intending on uh, perpetrating. We don't know any of that. We find out anything if this fucking, um, <clears throat> we can find out when this manifesto, if this manifesto comes to light, we could literally find out fucking anything. It could be anything. Anyway, here's uh, Laura Ingram suggesting to you, the viewer, that you can't actually think about two different things in a day. It's one of the things, uh, one of the kind of the big sort of talking points people will use. They'll be like, oh, X is a distraction from Y. And I'm like, well, thanks for insulting my intelligence. And I, you don't even have to be like hyper intelligent to think about two things. A healthy, vibrant democracy doesn't jail its political opponents. But the fact is the Biden administration has been a complete and utter failure on every front. So they'd rather spend the next year and a half sowing division and hatred than selling solutions to all the problems that they created. They don't respect you. They think you're stupid. So they want to eliminate your options at the ballot box by getting rid of Trump. The ultimate in election tampering, isn't it? And they want you and the well, end. Uh, what's, what's missing from this analysis, and we're, gonna, we're kind of switching over here. This is both the, the Trump indictment and the, the, the shooting in one story. But what's missing from this analysis is like, is the evidence sufficient for like, what's, what's in the indictment? Like that's all missing from this analysis again, because we don't fucking know. So here we are on the fucking making up, making shit up network. Maybe the second most making shit up show on the making shit up network, making shit up. Angle so distracted by this bogus criminal case that we ignore the fact that the U.S. under Biden is spiraling down the drain. Here are just a sampling of some of the stories today that they don't want to talk about. After transgender killed six at a Christian school, the White House said they were praying for the trans community, while Joe Biden said they are part of the fabric of America. And at the border, we just saw a group of a thousand illegal immigrants rush across yesterday. Is that a group of a thousand? Secretary Mayorkas claims he's unaware that the cartels use situations like that to distract border agents to bring in guns, drugs, and criminals. You name it, they did it. We have a reeling economy on multiple fronts, inflation persistent, and the banks are floundering. And at China's direction, the world is quickly decoupling from the American dollar. Wait, the what? The ramifications will be devastating for America if that continues. So Biden's approval on the economy, what is it, 32%? His overall approval, it's not that much better. Heck, only 25% of Democrats want him to run again. I, I doubt that. So his conception of democracy is that his family can make a fortune selling us out to China and anyone who disagrees with them will be subject to the mob intimidation or jail time. As of today, tens of millions of our fellow Americans will never be able to see him as anything but a harsh, selfish partisan who only cares about keeping his grip on power. But that's what any president that's the job you sign up for is having tens, if not hundreds of millions of people hate you. I'm sorry. That's just the fucking job, Laura. It's the job. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, Laura. That's the job. He signed up for the job. Yeah. People hate him. Not like this isn't a, like a, this isn't like a Biden stand stream. We 
fucking or generally to his left here. I'm glad he won the last election, though. <laughs> My God. Anyway, here's a. <clears throat> was a teacher explaining the contents of a fucking bucket to these kids. Um, these are the buckets that some people were claiming have um, kitty litter in them for the fucking uh, for the fucking furry students. Uh, but they don't. But there are. I guess if you got to pee in the corner, maybe some kitty litter wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have. Anyway, this is fucking terrifying. Well, it turns out people really don't know why we have these buckets in the classroom. It's because of school shootings, you guys. Right? And I hate to just say it bluntly like that, but when I first started teaching, we didn't have these buckets in the classroom. But now every classroom has a bucket like this in there because we go into lockdown and we're locked in our classrooms for extended periods of time while the situation is dealt with. And inside this bucket is a variety of things that we would need to survive for an extended period of time in the classroom. It's a survival kit, you guys. Now these people on TikTok complaining about the bucket, how many of them do you think go to work every day and have to worry about maybe pooping in a bucket because there's a shooter at their work? Not very many. Like Not very many, but you do. Everybody in this classroom does. I do. That's the reality of school in America, right? Not only that, but I have this backpack. In this backpack are blankets. What do you think they're for? Radiation? What? Radiation? Good guess. Nappy time. These are so I can cover up bodies. Oh, girl's nap time. So you don't have to see them. Okay. If I have to do that, it's probably going to be somebody I care about. Somebody you care about. So people being upset about our bucket video, they're upset about the wrong thing. They should be upset that these buckets exist. That we're at a point where we need these buckets. You feel me? Yeah. In fact, if we end up in a situation where any of you have to use this bucket, it's going to be a blessing. You know why? Because it means you're alive. Right? So... TikTok, those of you upset about the bucket, you're upset about the wrong thing. Let's make sure we're expending our energy being upset about the right things, okay? You can go to house.gov, contact your local representatives, make change, and create a society where we don't need buckets in the classroom. What do you think? Yeah! So, I, think, I think that's all I wanted to say. Fucking cool ass teacher. He was like, well, we'll make our own TikTok video. fucking terrifying now we're going to move on to the uh trump indictment uh portion of the show this is uh vivek ramas ramaswamy ramaswamy uh, i'm sure the republicans are going to vote for this guy he's running for president and uh he's like if they can do it to trump they can do it to you and by that he means indict you if they believe they have sufficient evidence that you've committed crimes how do you view this indictment this is a grave day in American democracy. I mean, this is a threat. This is fundamentally un-American. And Tucker, it's not even about Donald Trump. It's about every American, because if they can do it to Trump, they can do it to you. And this is something about that's bigger than partisan politics. Yes, I would like to defeat Donald Trump in this primary and in the election. You won't. Your last name I will prevent that. By convincing every voter to vote for If me. you didn't live in the United States right now, Tucker would be advocating for you to be shot at the border. Vivek. Because at the end of the day, the American people get to decide who governs this country, not a politicized prosecutor. And if you want to know how it's politicized, this is a prosecutor who is effectively fulfilling a campaign promise that he made. If it's any individual citizen and a prosecutor campaigns on indicting him or investigating him, that itself is politicized, let alone when he's the lead member of the opposition party to the ruling party that's in power. And we are not a country, Tucker. Whoever we are as a country, it's not a country that allows police power to be used by the ruling party to arrest its political opponents. Yet that's exactly what happened today. And I don't care if you're on the left or the right, turn the table, wear the shoe on the other foot. The other side would be complaining. You know what? The same principles apply in reverse as well. It's a sad day, and I'm worried for the future of the country because I do think... <laughs> Tucker's... I don't usually talk right to now. chat, but if you're listening to the podcast, it, Tucker did kind of look like he was pooping in a bucket during that. So, <clears throat> there's this... And it, it actually seems to play out in our society, too. So, it's not... 
it's not a crazy idea that once you reach a certain level of power, get a certain, get up a certain level in that layer cake that they're not coming for you. And that's probably true until you start fucking with other people near the top of that layer cake. And that's, that was, I think where Trump fucked up. He started fucking with other people who were also near the top of that layer cake. And now, now, now maybe they're coming for him. I don't know. But like the idea that because they can indict Trump, they can indict me. Well, yeah. Yeah. If I commit like financial crimes, yes, they can indict me. Sure. People get indicted all the time. And there's like a saying in law that you could indict a ham sandwich just for being a ham sandwich. So the fact that someone was indicted, it's actually a indictment is a fairly low bar. It's just, is there enough, you know, evidence here that we should uh, have a trial or, or that this person should be, you know, that this person should be charged or whatever. A lot of times people are indicted in absentia. You don't get to go to your indictment hearing, whatever. Um, and not for nothing, the Q people, remember all the Q people talking about all these 50 million sealed indictments? What we have here is a real sealed indictment. And I just wonder what kind of shit they're cooking about this. I didn't have a lot of time this week to spend on Telegram, so I couldn't tell you. Check out the QAnon Anonymous podcast if you want to know more about that. Here's uh, Seb Gorka. <laughs> Seb Gorka is going to answer a really important question that you, you've been dying to know the answer to this question. The idea that they've tried for seven years with the tools of the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, with special counsels, with star chamber committees of Congress to take him down. And now they're so desperate, they're trying to dig up non-disclosure agreements. I signed a non-disclosure agreement with President Trump in 2015. I'm not a porn star. Well, that's one for the soundboard. I was providing the president with policy advice during the primaries. I was writing national security briefing documents for the Trump organization. And I was signed a document to say, yeah, my, my work belongs to you, Mr. Trump and the Trump organization. I can't go off and publish it wherever I want. You're paying me to work for you. It's an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, utterly, utterly common across business. But, and he paid Sebastian Gorka with campaign funds, but that's because Sebastian Gorka, you know, not the best uh, person to have consulting for your campaign, was doing consulting for his campaign. And so there's no problem there. That's different than paying a, a, a sex worker to shut the fuck up with your campaign money. I think that's, that those aren't the same thing. They're not analogous. And yeah, Seb Gorka isn't a porn star. And I think we should all be very grateful for that. You don't want to be just kind of casually looking for some uh, adult entertainment on the internet. And then fucking all of a sudden there's Seb Gorka. Uh-uh. I don't think anybody wants that. So we can, uh, we can all agree that that's good. So this is a weird clip. People were kind of talking about it um, on Twitter, this next one. Some of the people were talking about just basically... Um, Lindsey Graham's overall like disposition in this, but there's also like, like noise happened in the background and we don't know what the noise was in the background. And they ended up having to cut away from uh, Lindsey Graham's uh, news hit. Senator Lindsey Graham is with us. Uh, Senator, welcome to the program. Thank you for being here. Let's get your uh, reaction. You are, if I remember correctly, I think you're a lawyer as well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, so I don't know if voodoo, <laughs> I don't know if voodoo's legal in New York, but this is legal. Voodoo's legal. Voodoo. You got a misdemeanor that's been made a felony. Nobody in the history of New York City has ever been prosecuted under this theory except for Donald J. Trump. This case will fall like a cheap suit under legal scrutiny. The chief witness, Michael Cohen, is a convicted felon whose own lawyer calls a unreliable dirtbag. So what's behind all this? Hatred. They tried to destroy Kavanaugh because they wanted to keep the Supreme Court seat open. They're trying to destroy Donald Trump because they fear him at the ballot box. To the conservatives out there, make sure you vote. 
If you got friends, make sure they vote. If you don't have any friends, go make some friends. But you need to help this man, Donald J. That's fucking sage advice. If you don't have any friends, go make some friends. Hey, Trump, they're trying to drain him dry. He spent more money on lawyers than most people spend on campaigns. They're trying to bleed him dry. Donald J. Trump.com. Go tonight. Give the president some money to fight this bullshit. This Whoa, is going dude. To destroy America. Is he going to cry? We're going to fight back at the ballot box. We're not going to give in. How does this end, Sean? Trump wins in court and he wins the election. That's how this wins. Ends. Long time. And how do you get to 34 counts on this, in your view? How do you do it? You take a, well, if, if you got a pile of crap and you chop it up 34 times, it's still a pile of crap. It's duplicious charging. They're trying to smear the guy. Duplicious, which is like duplicitous and delicious in one word. Cases that nobody else would take and resurrect them. This is literally legal voodoo. This is political persecution. This is a combination of political hatred and selective prosecution on steroids. To those who are listening tonight, if you believe Donald Trump is being treated poorly and wrongly, stand up and help the man. Pray for our country. Pray for him. Go to DonaldJTrump.com and give money so he can defend themselves. This is a moment in American history. This is the most irresponsible... Wait a minute. Can he use campaign funds to defend himself in a legal battle about... Dangerous decision by a prosecutor in the history of the country. He's opened up Pandora's box against the presidency itself. Hunter Biden and Joe Biden could be prosecuted under this theory if they were on vacation in South Carolina and made a call to China. This is a danger to the president. Wait, why? This is turning the rule of law upside down. Is it illegal to call China from fucking South Carolina? Man, Donald J. Trump, who the left fears, do not let them get away with this. Vote. Show up at the ballot box, DonaldJTrump.com. Give the man some money so he can fight. Thank you, Lindsey Graham. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, look at him. He's like, yeah. Yeah. South Carolina. He's like, yeah. Oh, here. No, thank you. So that was weird. Well, I don't know what was going on in the background with all that noise. Like usually the production value at Fox is pretty good. I'm, I was hoping there was something funny on the hot mic or whatever, but nah, it was just like, like it sounded like a crowded restaurant kind of the kind of restaurant where people would talk shit to uh, Lindsey Graham maybe. So, uh, here is Glenn Beck on the Tucker Carlson show, uh, talking about how Trump is now just a symbol for all of us are the Republicans? Where are the decent Democrats that can see this is this is insanity? B- Donald Trump. The re- why these again? Like PJ was saying in chat a second ago, nobody's even seen the fucking indictment. How do you know it's insanity? And it's actually the height of like impropriety. And I, I would imagine maybe it's illegal for members of Congress to interfere in a criminal investigation because they don't like who's being investigated. Not that they don't do it all the time. The reason why this is going to um, help Donald Trump, and that's why I don't think they're doing it so he can't run. They're doing it because they want people to strike out. Please turn to God, repent, pray for our country, pray for peace, put on the full armor of God. But here's what's really what they miss. Donald Trump is not even a person anymore. He is a symbol. He is a symbol of the average everyday guy that keeps getting screwed every day. Yeah, the average everyday guy gets to gets to fuck a porn star and then pay them to shut the fuck up. That's just what the average everyday fucking American does. Watches other people screw up big banks, screw up their companies and get away with it. He's, they see people all the time doing stuff that they know if they did, they'd be in prison for 20 years. But because they're not part of the elite, they get away with it. Don- well, that's why some people are really glad that Donald J. Trump is under indictment now because people feel the same way. They just, they're just glad it's Donald Trump because they think that he is the elite and he gets away with all kinds of shit. Donald Trump yeah. has taken arrow after arrow, and that's why 
This is the way the average American feels tonight. Yeah. Uh, Except the average American didn't vote for Donald Trump. A few Republic or uh, Democrats out there. But this guy has been taking the bullets for the average person now for years. And people on the right feel like he's the only guy that really gets what the f- people are feeling. And it's uh, it's not going to it's not going to end well. Uh, for the Democrats in the next election. It's just not. I don't know if Donald Trump is the winner or not, but I will tell you this. You're not going to stop a hundred million people. This country is in shambles. And there's going to be a hundred million is a third of the country. Hundred million people that will walk on broken glass and through fire to vote for someone other than this corrupt banana republic administration. That's, I think, exactly right. Glenn Beck, wow. I'm be pro- Shouldn't have got fired from Fox, Glenn. Shouldn't have got fired from Fox. Like, 100 million people, I don't know how many people are registered to vote. If Trump would have got 100 million votes last time, I think he would have won. He would have won the Electoral College fair. Like, yeah, he would have won. He would have got more votes than the other guy. He didn't get no 100 million votes. Don't worry, though. Everything's going to be fine for old, old Donald Trump here. Uh, MAGA prophet, who we usually put in red light, uh, Julie Green. She's the one who claims to uh, just speak via, speak for God or even have God enter her and speak through her. Well, her and Laura Trump are going to go ahead and pray and uh, everything's going to be peachy keen. We just want to, you know, just pray for you. So. Thank you. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up Laura and our entire family, Father God, the whole entire Trumps. We lift them up to you, and we thank you, first of all, and first and foremost, Father God, we thank you that you have risen each and every one of them up for such a time as this. We thank you, Father God, that nothing the enemy has done to them will prosper against them. We also thank you that nothing the enemy has done will prosper, but also to give them back everything that has been stolen from them and vindicated their name father god i also ask you in this time that you have them and you've raised them up i'd be praying for laura trump too my lord she's married to eric trump i thank you for giving them joy i thank you for giving them strength and i also thank you father god for putting the right people to surround them to bring them up strong in the name of jesus shut the fuck up in the name of jesus every single day show them your glory father god show them how much that you love them show them father god how much they are important not only to this country and to the world but how important they are individually to you because you are their children so we thank you for their guarding angels protecting them. We thank you, Father God, that we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them because the enemy cannot pass that line, that bloodline. And we thank you, Father God, that you are restoring their name. You are restoring what enemy, the enemy has stolen. You are restoring to them, Father God, the positions that you have called them to be in. And there's nothing that Satan can do and there's nothing that, that anybody he uses can do to keep them from their calling and keep them from their assignments. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I. <laughs> oh, they just did a prayer. Everything's going to be all hunky-dory for old, uh, old, old Donald Trump here. So usually by... Halfway through the show, we, we have a palate cleanser, but <clears throat> it took us a while to get there this evening, and we're really not going to get to, we're not even going to get to half of the shit on the docket. Might go live tomorrow night, actually, after we record our tech show to do uh, get to the stuff we didn't get on the docket. So here is <laughs> one of three palate cleansers. This one, <laughs> I put this one first because it's, it's pretty fucking funny. If anybody knows who uh, Nick Adams Alpha Male is on Twitter, you you will also think this is pretty fucking funny. Bible. 
<laughs> Anybody fucking clowning on that fucking Nick Nick Adams guy is gonna get some airtime here on the show. Uh, here's here's another palate cleanser. This is uh, <laughs> this is sort of a response to one of those like kind of masculinity influencer types. There's a lot of them kind of masculinity influencer types out there. Uh, I don't know who this guy is specifically, but I'm glad somebody's talking shit and making fun of him too. Modern women out there that are panicking around the ages 28 to 31, they're desperate to find a beta provider. He's not right, but he's not entirely wrong either. You see, women panic in their late 20s and early 30s, not because they're looking for a beta provider, but because they're looking for a blood donor. Women lose a lot of blood throughout their lives because of their periods, so by the time they reach their late 20s, they become anemic and crave human blood. Through Satan's guiding, women in their late 20s acquire new skill sets that allow them to attract males in order to harvest their blood. This process can take up to approximately three hours, but in the olden days, women could go months without a personal blood donor. But thanks to modern technology, it's become significantly easier to find simps who are willing to tie the knot around their arm, allowing me to find a good vein to extract their blood. Now, does this only work with beta males? Well, no, but alphas don't need to be asked. Real alphas are always ready and willing to donate their blood. Next time you see a woman in her late 20s looking a little pale, make the first move by giving her some of your blood, because that's what an alpha would do. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite genres of videos is, is people like making fun of these sort of masculinity influencer types and that was that was some good shit there i got one more palate cleanser this one's weird this one's just just bizarre and i didn't really know what to do with it so i figured well it's it's weird so we're going to use it as a palate cleanser we were in the middle of our tournament where my friend John said he found a body in the bushes over there. I ran over there because I'm a healing monk to try and help, but obviously my magic wasn't strong enough because the dude's body was missing a head. So my friend decided to try and use a necromancer spell, which didn't work, which I knew it wouldn't. And apparently we contaminated the crime scene because that spell uses a lot of glitter. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a Reno 911 skit. I obviously this person's taking the piss. I mean, they're clear like they clearly don't think their friends a necromancer or whatever. It's pretty funny though. I told you we had three palate cleansers and uh my favorite was the second one. The first one was pretty good too, but the second one was hot fire. It cleansed the shit out of my palate, let me tell you here. So we're going to we're going to have to move on again here. Uh Republicans can't win elections be, not because of democratic strongholds, but actually because of demonic strongholds. Shout out to Right Wing Watch. There's no Republican that can legally make it into the White House the way that the elections are set up right now. I've done a close analysis of this. The six swing states, Georgia and Arizona and Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, I guess North Carolina, uh, what else? Georgia, thank you. You mentioned Those Georgia. States have counties, six counties, that are so tightly wrapped up by the devil that it's virtually impossible for you to see an election go through that grid work and come out honest unless there's a divine intervention. I just want you to know what we're up against. But I suggested to Mario, if we do a fire and glory tour, what I would do is I would want to go to every one of those swing states and I would make it a goal to break down the stronghold over each of those counties. It's a demonic stronghold. No, it's just a city. It's the, a democratic stronghold. But I mean, to these people, that's kind of the same thing. He When he says that, he means cities. He just means cities. The cities, all the cities lean pretty hard Democrat. Pretty crazy, actually. It was, like, really surprising that the Miami-Dade County in Florida went for uh, DeSantis this last time around. So now we're going to check in on Charlie Kirk. Uh, he's got a uh, Jack Posobiec on his show. This is um, a Bumble Jack, otherwise known as a uh, Pizzagate Jack Posobiec. And uh, well, let's see what they have to say here. I have never. I mean, this is decisive. The, Donald Trump is a symbol. He's more than a person. He is a symbol. 
He's a symbol for every person that's screwed over by the government, for every person that is lied about, for every person that is scorned. And then they have to go see him indicted on a paperwork crime. Andrew, I mean, there's always there's going to be a primary. DeSantis might do the best he can. But this I mean, if you wanted Donald Trump to be the nominee, you would do this. Now, if you really want to talk about four dimensional chess, maybe Alvin Bragg is under orders because they think that Donald Trump might be easier to beat. I don't know. That might be a little bit of a that might be a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> fucking Bumblejack was like not even paying attention. He's like, whatever, dude. All right, go off. Go off, Charlie. Go off. So uh, here is, uh, because we can't really do a, a weekly news show without um, Matt Walsh. Uh, here's Matt Walsh uh, talking about uh, slavery. It's going to be great. Of course. That's only one argument against the reparations idea. There are many more and better ones. I've outlined most of them on the show at various points in the past. But today I'd like to talk, uh, talk about and call attention to a different argument against reparations. One that is, by our culture standards, rather unspeakable. Which doesn't mean that it's wrong. In fact, it normally means precisely the opposite. A guy named Wilford Riley, who's a college professor with a decent social media following. Oh, Wilford. Oh, that's the guy that challenged. He challenged me to a fucking debate on Twitter. And I fucking, I was like, hey, can I, I was like, I'm going to DM you a link to Video Ninja. I'm like, I, I could be ready to talk to you in a few minutes. And then he called me a bad faith actor and blocked me. And, but I think what happened is that he wanted to fucking debate me because he goes around challenging everybody to do a debate. But people don't, most people don't talk into a microphone for a living or even like as a hobby. Only a few of us are crazy enough to do that. And so he probably didn't know who I was and then took a look. He's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, this is, a, this is a person who speaks into a microphone quite often. Going to go ahead and block this person, but only after I call them bad faith. Um, who also happens to be a black man. Made this point on Twitter yesterday. Here's, here's what he tweeted. An awkward historical fact, which genuinely complicates the reparations debate, is that black Americans are just obviously better off on average than we would have been had our ancestors never come to the United States. Pointing out something this self-evidently true isn't justifying slavery, which was obviously terrible for slaves and existed globally in 1850. But no one arguing for that $5 million today in L.A. It didn't exist globally. I mean, it existed other places on the planet, but slavery had been abolished. I believe the United Kingdom abolished slavery. Slavery. I believe other European nations that have, have abo had abolished, like the kind of chattel slavery the United States was engaged in. A slave. Uh, pro POC affirmative action has been the law since '67. Now he's not the first person to make this point. I remember. I, I remember hearing Dinesh D'Souza articulating the same uh, point uh, years and years ago. And the only thing that makes the point controversial is the insistence by disingenuous idiots to misconstrue it. They will say, as was referenced, that you're justifying slavery or defending it, perhaps even advocating for more of it. But that is obviously not the point. The point is that the push for reparations rests on the notion that black Americans are in a considerably worse spot today than they would have been had their ancestors never been brought here as slaves. They that is not the argument for reparations. Say that we must repair this damage, damage that black Americans are currently experiencing, they say, to the yes. tune of $5 million or $7.5 million or maybe $75 million. Black, black Americans today are the furthest removed from that historic atrocity and yet should be paid the most in restitution for it. That's the claim. But this is a false notion. In fact, it seems rather clear that black Americans are doing better here today than they would be had their ancestors generations ago never been brought to these shores. We can prove this point by simply asking which African country anyone asking for reparations would prefer to live in. The answer, of course, is none of them. Now, you might offer the rebuttal that if slavery never existed, if we're reimagining history without that institution at all, then uh, Africa itself would be in a better shape, better place and better shape. And maybe indeed black Americans would be better off there. But this seems highly unlikely. And it also ignores the fact that Africans participated in slavery and the slave trade as much as they were victims of it. Not to mention, if we're reimagining the world without African slavery, then we have to also imagine it without all other forms of global slavery, since African slavery was merely one variety, one offshoot of this global institution. 
And now we have totally, at that point, rewritten the history of the world in a way so dramatic that it, it's absolutely impossible to say which individuals today would end up worse or better in this alternate universe. I mean, if you go back in time and get rid of slavery from the entire world, you have just, it's impossible to say what the world looks like right now. Actually, what we can say is that we'd all end up worse. All of us today would be in a worse spot if uh, slavery never existed at all across the entire globe. Because a change that significant would likely shift the course of events in a way that would mean none of us would even exist. It would be a world full of other people who are not us. <laughs> I know that I benefit today from virtually what the everything fuck? my ancestors did and everything did to them. Because if any of that had not happened, there's a very good chance that I never would have come into being. And as I see it, I benefit from being if the other option. Well, I don't really think that anybody else really benefits from your being. Not being. So where do we land after all of this? Um, you know, it's it's absurd. Once you get into this conversation, uh, well, let's get rid of this whole huge part of history and uh, and then try to figure out the equation of who's better off. Who's better. It becomes I immediately ridiculous. And what does that mean for the reparations discussion? Well, it means that the discussion is totally incoherent and stupid. It means that any reparations plan is an arbitrary policy resting on a whole series of totally unsupported and wildly speculative assumptions about the way things would be right now if they weren't the way that they actually are. And the best we can say about that assumption, the assumption that blacks in this country are worse off today because of slavery, is that it is a baseless theory. But we can, what we can really but say about it is that it's a dubious conclusion based on fanciful and pointless hypotheticals. But he's arguing against a counterfactual that no, no, no people advocating for reparations are arguing. <clears throat> the argument for reparations is pretty fucking simple. Discrimination against black people prevented them and their families from creating generational wealth the way white people could. You don't have to go back that far to find like legal redlining. Remember Bill O'Reilly always talking about, oh, I grew up all rough and tumble in Levittown. Well, you know, he wasn't allowed to fucking grow up in Levittown at all when he was growing up? Black people. And so they had to live somewhere else. And the property value in Levittown went up. And to the extent that black people were buying property at all, the property value probably wasn't going up at the same rate. And they were probably subject to other discrimination in housing, loans, that kind of stuff. And that's just one example. It's the most recent one I can think of. I mean, this guy, this... This counterfactual that he wants to argue against is stupid. People in chat are like, this guy's not making a good argument. That's because he's, it's stupid. It's not even just not good. It's fucking stupid. I don't know the answer on reparations. I don't claim to have the answer. I, I think black folks should be made whole um, in some way. And um, I hope maybe to see it in my lifetime, but uh, not super fucking, not super confident that I am going to see it. So. <clears throat> We got two more. We're going to go a little long, I think, on the pod version of the show because I got to get to these two. This is Tim Pool, and you're not, you're absolutely not going to fucking believe what he is going to say here about his band. Natural audience. Yeah. I had all these leftists being like, you're only selling music because your fans are buying it. And I was like, huh? <laughs> right. You, like, yes. Like right. that's literally what it's tracking. Uh -huh, uh -huh. More of my fans buy my music than Taylor Swift buys hers. Wait, what? And then people will respond, yeah, because no one buys music anymore. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you're telling me that interna international pop sensation Taylor Swift, yeah. people don't buy her music. Of course they buy uh -huh. her music. Uh -huh. And we did better. And yeah. they were like, yeah, well, she's not trying to sell her music. You think these people... Given <laughs> so actually a big artist like Taylor Swift uh, has very little the the music sales are like a very little incentive taylor swift makes her money on tour she makes her money by selling out arenas yeah i'm sure that uh, taylor swift whoever manages her money or if she manages herself or whatever is like oh look at this this music sales that's good we made some money selling music oh look we made some money um uh on streaming look at all this money we made touring we're gonna focus on touring to sell music would choose not to do it yeah it's instant cash in your pocket of course they want it yeah. you have to stream a song what is it 1500 times mm -hmm. to get the equivalent of one sale yeah if taylor swift could sell 
they would do it. The problem is... She can. She sells out arenas, Tim. They have lost all of their influence, and the only control they have is the machine, the mechanism that mm -hmm. forces you to listen to their music. Mm -hmm. If Taylor Swift was not placed on the digital streaming platforms because these companies are given preference, mm -hmm. then nobody would listen to her music. Mm -hmm. What happens is, here's a lesson for everybody. We put out a song, smashes the records, we're, we're, we charted amazingly in like rock, alternative, rock and alternative. Mm -hmm. That's based on people listening to the music. Mm -hmm. Then we charted in digital sales, which mm -hmm. is people buying the song. And not we, didn't, we did not get placed on one digital streaming playlist. Mm -hmm. That's radio. Yeah. So radio doesn't play our songs. Digital streaming playlist is not radio. Or on Spotify, they won't play our songs. Mm -hmm. And we still did that well. Yeah. Taylor Swift, they're like 13 of the top 100 were all Taylor Swift. Yeah. Right. What that means is Pandora, Spotify, mm -hmm. and YouTube Music decided we are going to play the song by default for anybody who comes to our platform, mm -hmm. whether they want it or not. Yeah. I, I got nothing. Does he have any idea? First of all, the Taylor Swift fans are just going to eat him for lunch if they fucking see that clip. Those people, the Taylor Swift uh, little digital army on the internet, you do not want to cross them. They're coming for you, Tim Pool. But also, I don't think he outsold her like any given year. Somebody in chat was like, uh, maybe for a week. And I could see like if his album came out and a bunch of his fans went and bought it or whatever in a week. Yeah, he might have a week where he does better than Taylor Swift on sales specifically. <clears throat> but Taylor Swift, just like other recording artists probably makes the most of her money, like for album sales in just a few weeks after the album comes out. Right. It's like a fucking, it's a, it's a long tail, right? Like what the fuck? It's just like my podcast. When I put this podcast out, most people, like when I go to check metrics, most people will listen to any given episode of the show within a few days after it comes out, if they listen at all. And that's how this works. So if they didn't, you know, if your album came out a, a year after Taylor Swift's last album came out and then you beat her for a week in sales, so the fuck what? What was she doing that week? You know what she was doing? Either counting her money or selling out an arena. So <clears throat> this is weird. This next clip is pretty weird. I don't really like Richard Dawkins. I don't like most of the people that came up in what we were loosely refer to as like new atheism. You can check out my interview with uh, Ina from uh, uh, Polite Conversations for a little bit more of sort of what I think about that. But the thing they're mad at Dawkins here for is, is that when he was asked a question, he's like, I don't have enough information to answer the question, essentially, which is a reasonable fucking answer. But not for this Yasmin Muhammad lady. She mad at the answer to this, apparently. Big debate about this ISIS bride, Shamima Begum, whether she should be allowed to come back to this country. Do you have a view about that? I'd rather not say. You'd rather not say? I haven't studied it enough. Well, she was married to an ISIS fighter. Right. I'd rather not say. Sounds like he's like, oh, I don't want to talk about this. But then he said, I haven't studied enough. That means he just, he's like, I don't know. Like, I don't like no Richard Dawkins, but that's a perfectly reasonable response to any question. I don't have enough information to give you my opinion on this. I, yeah, I, I know. She was a young, but she was 15 yes. when she went out there. The, yes. the, the debate really is, was she groomed to be part of this terror group yes. in Syria? And as such, should we show mercy and allow her back to this country? Yes, I'm not, I'm not going to say about that. Are you worried about, I mean, do you get threats because of the positions you've taken on some of these things? Yeah. No, he just it. fucking told you that he doesn't know enough about it. This is a dude who'll pop off at his uh, pop off on about fucking racist shit at the drop of a hat. No problem. Never has any problem shitting on Muslim people. He's just like, I don't know. To Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Didn't send a shutter three. Yeah. Are you saying no, you don't want to talk about it? Or? Yes. Right. I mean, that's interesting in itself. Because yes. it there are areas which you would prefer not to discuss. Yes. I should have said that before we started. Yeah. No, but listen, I, I'm, I think it's sad that you can't. I don't think anything should be. He didn't say that he can't. He just told you about the first thing you asked about it, that he doesn't know enough about it. Like, how is, come on. Comments and interviews with people like you. Mm. The whole point of the world's smartest thinkers is we ought to better have free and open debate. But I don't think we do because people use murderous 
retribution against free speech. Really is what it amounts to. Yeah, but the dude just told you, I don't know. How the fuck? You should never, if I don't know is a good enough answer for anything. I'm sorry. Again, I'm not, I don't like, I don't like Richard Dawkins. He's been a giant piece of shit ever since like, I don't know. I don't remember when, but uh, of late last five or 10 years, dude's been a massive piece of shit. Basically ever since that elevator gate incident, I think. Um, <clears throat> but I don't see why, like, why, like, why, why was the interviewer upset about that? Why was the, the person who made the Twitter post was fucking made a whole thread about that. She seemed livid and it's like, yo, this old man who usually has bad racist takes didn't have a bad racist take on this. And he just said he doesn't know enough about it. Fucking let that be. Let That's fine. We need more of that in society. People to be like, I don't know enough about this, so I'm not going to open my mouth about it. We need more of that. That's good. <clears throat> and this podcast was bad. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or uh, those new podcasting 2.0 apps that I don't really understand yet, but I happen to somehow have ended up on all of them. Thanks all of you for listening to the podcast. Do not hesitate to follow this Twitch channel. We had a couple followers during the show tonight. Um, during the show, we had a uh, master meatball and Colorado Sherpa follow the show. Be like them. Follow the channel, twitch.tv slash echoplex media. If you don't want to watch the show live, but you want to catch the whole show, there's two places you can get the show after the show in its entirety. You can get it at Patreon, patreon.com slash Echoplex, or where I recommend people go is eplex.store. There's memberships there. You get the same exact stuff that you get on Patreon, but then you also get a discount on any of the shirts, mugs, uh, any of the Ruffies uh, stuff, any of the Ruffies band stuff that we have in there. And uh, so that's probably the best way to support the show. Also, just giving us money directly. You can do that too. There's plenty of ways to do that. Echoplexmedia.com slash support. I am going to pour a cocktail because I need one. I'm going to change the color of the lights in this room because everybody really likes it better when the lights are red in here. Let's, let's, let's not, let's not get it twisted. Uh, it doesn't all the weird shadow that's cast behind me isn't, isn't cast under the red lights. This is boomers by Periscope and I'll be back with red light. Thanks everybody again.
all the goth DJs and Twitch witches are hanging out on Thursday for the bad VHS rips, unblinking eyes, and fire by night. Thetans and Satans comes from an interest in the cult of Scientology, moral panics, Satanism, and how they set the tone for the extremist social media panics of today. We really earn our weird left Twitch badge with this show, watching the world go red light in reverse every Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Find our full schedule at echoplexmedia.com.